Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Gillian Small, I'm the University Provost, and I'm delighted to welcome you to a new semester at FDU, and especially to our first year students, uh, welcome you to FDU for your first semester. Um, for all of you, I know this is not rolling out the way you had expected or hoped, um, but we all need to keep you know, safety, health and safety of our community as our number one priority. And uh, we all need to abide by the rules and the best practices to keep everybody safe. And we're convinced that we can still maintain our commitment to all of our students that we will provide a first class education, a first class environment, whether it be on campus or, or virtual. And we have some wonderful faculty, both uh, to talk to you on tonight, uh, this afternoon's forum, but also ready to help you with your classes. So we, we, we hope that uh, you feel a little less anxious um, at the end of this forum, but the, really we want to, uh, to welcome you virtually. We know that all of our classes will be virtual for the first four weeks, but then uh, starting on September 14th, we will have a few limited in-person classes, and we know that we have many students who have elected to come and uh, stay on our campuses, whether it be at Metro Campus or at the Florham Campus. And uh, we welcome you there. The campus executives from each of those campuses are on the meeting tonight, and uh, we'll speak to you briefly shortly. Uh, but again, the majority of our classes will be remote. We have some in-person classes in, in labs and some uh, clinicals and hands-on experiences. Uh, but most, most lectures will be remote, and we know that uh, that, that can raise some anxiety in how to uh, learn and meet friends and maintain all of the things that you hope to do in, a, in your college experience when many of your courses are, are remote. So we hope we're gonna give you some pointers and some best practices in how to manage all of that um, this afternoon. Uh, we do have you all on, on, on mute at the moment. We'll keep that way, but there is a chat function any questions that you have, uh, either now or during the course of the forum this afternoon, just write, write your, your, your questions in the chat function and we will be addressing as many as we can uh, after the speakers have, have finished giving you um, their tips and advice. We can't actually address each individual student's personal issues, um, uh, but we hopefully we'll give you pointers as to how to get those addressed if you have specific issues. But issues that are pertinent to probably several of you, feel free to, to write them in the chat uh, and we will we'll address them as we go forward. Uh, the Deputy Campus Executive, Craig Morton, uh, from the Metro Campus, will be reading those questions and will uh, have the most appropriate person uh, respond to them. But we do have a number of people uh, here today, as I said, including the campus executives, including our University Director of Academic Technologies and our Associate Provost for Educational Resources and Assessment, all to provide you with advice. We have some, uh, also some faculty to, uh, to talk to you as well. Um, so let me introduce first uh, Steve Nelson, who is the Metro Campus Executive. Steve. Good afternoon, everybody, and I just want to echo Provost Small and welcome everyone to another great year here at FDU. Uh, we're really excited. I know it's not the same, but at the same time, we can make the best of it. Um, as Provost Small was speaking about health and safety, that is our top priority. So two things that I want to mention. First is that you received an email regarding a COVID-19 training. It is a requirement that everyone who's attending any classes at the university completes. So please make sure that you get that done uh, as soon as humanly possible. There is also a link to that training. If you can't find the email, there's a link within Fall and, uh, Fall and Fairly that you'll hear more about when Brian speaks. Um, the second thing I wanna mention is the Campus Clear app. That is an app that you can get for your mobile phone, either Google or Android, um, or Apple or Android. And you will need to complete that anytime that you are coming onto campus. So therefore, you just wanna, you wanna do the one question, fill that in and submit that. You'll need it to get onto campus at Florham and you'll need it to get into any building at Metro. So it's, it's urgent that you get that uh, downloaded and get started on filling that out. But otherwise, that's all I have. So again, welcome. And I'm gonna pass this on to Mr. Morrow. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the FDU family. Uh, as Steve mentioned, my name is Brian Morrow and I have the honor of serving as the Florham Campus Executive. 
Uh, FDU may look a little bit different to many of you. It's not the experience we anticipated, but one thing is for certain, you're gonna get the same great experience inside and outside the classroom. To learn more about the support services available to you and how to go about uh, taking advantage of them to help you succeed, uh, you received an email from uh, the Dean of Students at your respective campus uh, entitled Fall at Fairly. Uh, the Fall at Fairly uh, document is on a platform called Comebo, and it includes modules on all the different support services that are available from health services, counseling services, Dean of Students office, academic and support services. It tells you how you can reach them uh, both virtually and in person. Uh, to schedule meetings and to take advantage of all those things they can do to help you succeed uh, with your coursework. There's also modules on living on campus. We know that we have a number of students uh, still choosing to live on campus when our residence halls are open and we look forward to welcoming you back. Make sure you're familiar with all the new rules and regulations that pertain to uh, COVID. Uh, they will be enforced. And lastly, if you're looking for something to do, uh, ways to connect, uh, there, you'll also find information in there about a wonderful array of activities that are being hosted virtually. Uh, we have clubs and organizations that can't wait to recruit new members. So stay tuned and get involved. Thank you both, uh, Steve and Brian. And uh, again, uh, uh, we know not every student is, is coming to campus, but for those who do, uh, we, we look forward to seeing you there, all wearing your masks and we'll be wearing our masks. So we'll all look a little different. Uh, but we still look forward to seeing you there. So a lot of uh, the concern or anxiety with starting a semester fully remote is related to accessing your classes, how to manage uh, the, uh, the technology, especially for our, um, for our first year students, but also for all students, um, and how best to manage it. So we have some people here who, uh, who want to give you some tips, and I'm going to start with Manish Wadawa, who is our University Director of Academic Technologies, uh, to talk you through a few things. Manish. Thank you very much, Gillian, and, and welcome all. Uh, what's exciting is I see a few of my students here that I met with yesterday, and here's one of them, Nicole, uh, that, that smile. So welcome all, um, and I'm glad you're here. So there are a few things I would like to bring it to your attention. So you are provided support, you are handheld, so you don't have to really jump through hoops. Uh, I'm going to put that number in the chat box. That is our help desk number. Um, and they are open 24 hours, seven days a week. Okay, so any password related issues, any system access that has been denied, or you locked out, just call them and they'll, they'll reset it for you. If they're not able to reset it for you, they will pass it on to the relevant department who can then help you, okay? So that's a one-stop shop. The other thing about passwords is accessing three or four major systems that you will be using throughout your, your, your college career. One is Web Campus, the most important one, where all your classes, where all your content and all the course material, the interactions, the discussion boards, everything is in there, okay? That, that service is also used as a single sign-on service with one password that you've been given as your net ID. Remember the net ID. That net ID gets you through to the Office 365 service, gets you through to Zoom. If you guys want to interact with, the, with each other you, utilizing Zoom, you, you guys all have a basic license so you can talk with each other for 45 minutes and web campus, and there are other services too. So you don't really have to memorize 10 different passwords to access FDU services. And again, if you have, let's say you, 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 you don't know how to use Blackboard, you don't know how to use uh, the discussion board in Blackboard or submit an assignment, call that number, they should be able to help you. If for some reason they're not able to help you, they will definitely pass on your call. In fact, they page us for urgent calls and we will jump on it and we will, we will uh, try to help you out as much as we can. Thank you, Manish. And I know we did a, a student forum also on Monday and some students said they, uh, perhaps they were first year students, said that they really uh, didn't know how to manage Blackboard. So if that's the case for any students uh, today, 
uh, Manish and our next speaker, uh, who I'm going to introduce in a minute, are willing to stay behind at the end of the forum and uh, talk you through uh, the rudimentary uh, steps of, of Blackboard. So don't worry if you're thinking, I really don't know how to use that yet. I know this is the third day of classes, but um, uh, you know, I understand some people may start late or whatever. And if you have any issues, just stay at the end. And if there are any students uh, still on, uh, they will talk you through um, the rudimentary steps of using Blackboard. But, you know, all of your classes, as I said, for the first four weeks are remote. And I know many, for many of you, uh, most if not all of your classes will be remote through the entire semester. Some of them will be uh, fully online classes, either synchronously or asynchronously. And some of them will be remotely offered through Zoom and other technologies. And there are best practices and best ways to, to manage that so that you don't feel so anxious. And our, our next speaker, Kathy Kelly, who is the Associate Provost for Educational Resources and Assessment, is an expert in this area, and she's going to give you some tips. So, Kathy, please. Thank you very much. And again, welcome, everybody. Um, so the tips that I have for you are um, primarily about just being an online learner. Now, most of the tips that I would normally provide to people to help them be uh, a successful online learner are the kinds of things that you do already anyway. The tips for being a successful online learner are not that different from you know, anything you would do to be a successful student in a regular classroom. So all of the good practices that you've already established, keep those up and keep doing them. And you know what those are. Um, but here are some, th some ones that are unique to this world right now, things that you might not have thought of that um, might help you. So one thing, um, this is again, something that's always useful, but especially right now, which is stay organized. Um, it's especially if you're not meeting your professors all the time, it's gonna be a lot easier to lose track of all of the things you need to do for your classes and set up a, stud a quiet study space, as quiet as you can make it, um, and quiet study time too, as much as you can. That can be challenging if you're living with other people, but do your best to negotiate on your own behalf and, and carve out some quiet space and time for you to the extent that you can. Um, also, when you are in your Zoom sessions with your instructors during class time, uh, some tips for that. One thing is turn on your camera if you feel at all comfortable with that. It really helps uh, your professors. Um, they, just like you, are, they look forward to talking to you and they wanna talk to you. Um, and it helps them a lot if they can see your faces while they are working with you during class time. If you wanna hide the environment where you're living or you just wanna you know, get a little bit more privacy, consider using one of the Zoom backgrounds that uh, Fairleigh Dickinson has provided. You'll see a number of people here um, have this blue screen with FTU or various uh, varieties of that. We have those on our website and we have some that are special for students that you might like even better. So go look for those and use them. Um, another tip during your Zoom sessions, if your instructor welcomes class discussion and, and most of them will, I would suggest that you talk more, not less than you do in a face-to-face -face classroom. It's so easy when you're on Zoom and you know this, I mean, if you've been participating, if you were already at Fairly last semester or doing this in your high schools, if you're freshmen, um, it's so easy to turn invisible. On, on Zoom. So um, do your best to be there and, and be there for yourself, be there for your instructor. Um, if you're in an, a noisy environment, it helps to get headphones. I said, get quality ones if you can. The ones I have are kind of not, not so good, but um, they really do help block out noisy environments uh, for yourself and for the people who are listening to you. This is the most important tip now. Be in communication with your instructors. If you're having any kind of challenge, you're having problems with the technology, you're having problems keeping up with anything, something is getting in the way, and it's a very strange world. We know that. It's, it's not a normal time. But let your instructors know that things are you know, going south for you in some way. Be in communication with them and um, be your own champion uh, when it comes to your studies. Your instructors, I think you'll find, are very responsive to that and will be there for you. Um, another tip is to use our campus resources. Um, uh, we have lots of campus resources. Most of them are available, some on campus still, but all of them have remote access. So uh, the, the Fall at Fairly website that most of you have seen, that's got a list of all the resources and all their opening hours if they're on campus. Everything you need to know is there. So use it, it's there for you. And again, reach out for help. Anything, if something's going wrong for you, go to one of those resources and reach out for help. 
And the, the final, again, this, is, this one is really uh, very important, is um, do everything you can to reach out to your fellow students. Again, don't, don't let yourself get isolated just because we're all in this online world. It can get really lonely. And um, even if you're living on campus, it's a little different than being on campus in the way you normally are on campus. So reach out to each other, do those Zooms with each other, find other ways to connect. And some of the other people here will give you some more direct pointers for how uh, you might be able to do that. So that's pretty much everything I had to say. So again, thanks and good luck, welcome. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, I hope the students uh, on, the, on the forum uh, are getting a feeling that people are really here to help you. So uh, now, uh, you know, you will be interacting with faculty in your classes, um, but just to show how, how much the faculty care, we have some faculty on the forum tonight uh, who are gonna talk to you. So let me introduce Dr. Rich Nisa, who's professor of ge uh, geography in, uh, at the Florham campus. Uh, Rich. Hey everybody, uh, thanks for coming this evening, this afternoon. Um, I've sort of lost track of time, I'm sure as many of you have uh, in this Zoom universe. Um, uh, it's been a couple of days that, that the semester has been going now and I'm sure most of you have been through at least one class. So hopefully, uh, you know, as a, a member of the faculty, what I have to say uh, can ease some anxiety if you've already noticed some, but I do wanna stress um, that uh, the forum is open for questions. So if students have questions about uh, general things about what's been going on already that they've identified in this first week, you know, do, do type them up and, and we'll, uh, we'll try to address them. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things, um, you know, and, and just first and foremost, uh, this is also for, for many of your faculty, uh, this is their first week back, right? And so uh, I've been teaching, I've had two days of teaching and I still don't have my teaching sea legs I'm still figuring things out in this environment. So when you think about the anxiety that you're, you're facing in this new environment, remember, you're not the only ones, right? Uh, we are trying to deal with all this stuff as well. And ultimately, we're trying to make your classroom experience uh, emulate as closely as possible the classroom experiences that you have uh, if we were able to meet face to face. Um, so just a couple of words on that. You know, this is obviously a strange environment, a strange way to interact with people. Um, but as far as courses go, just wanted to remind you that a lot of the work that you would be doing in your classes always happened on your own time. You came together with faculty in a classroom for, you know, an hour and 15 minutes uh, a pop a couple times a week. Um, but you did the reading on your own, you did the writing on your own, you went to the library on your own or in study groups. And I would just encourage you as this semester starts to uh, start to, to, to move forward that, that you continue thinking about that and, and try and find ways uh, or maybe people to Zoom with, to do study sessions, or you know, to, to find a safe and comfortable place to do uh, your classwork. I think uh, uh, piggybacking on what Kathy had mentioned, make space for yourself in the same way you would have to make space for yourself on campus. And then just as a reminder for everyone, that's gonna be different. When we're all face-to-face -face on campus, some students like to go to the library to study. Some students do it in their dorms, in the cafeteria, um, you know, wherever. So, figure out where you learn best and try and emulate that in your own, you know, homes and your own architecture. Um, so, so that said, you know, uh, as a, uh, two things uh, that I just wanted to stress uh, in terms of how you might uh, succeed uh, or at least put yourself in a better position to succeed uh, as the semester starts. And that first one is your professors uh, put together a syllabus. Um, I'm sure you've heard this a lot already this week, but read it. Um, get familiar with what each of your professors expects from you, um, whether that expectation is written work, uh, whether it's a discussion forum, uh, whether it's participation in the classroom uh, itself. And as Kathy said, consider participating more. You have multiple avenues to do that. You can do it with your face. You can type it up, right? There's ways for, for students to learn different ways um, and you can use those uh, different ways to participate in class. But if you read the syllabus, you'll know what technologies you have to familiarize yourself with, the things you might need to learn uh, so that the, the semester doesn't get away from you. If you learn them in the first week, you'll be in a better position uh, in week 12 and week 13 as, as things are drawing to a close. Um, and, and just a real a quick last thing, uh, and that is that a lot of the faculty, most of the faculty, I'd imagine spent a lot of their summer working very hard to try to make this experience uh, good as a learning experience for, for you um, as students and to make it natural for us as faculty. That said, right, I know speaking personally, one of the reasons I became 
a professor was because I like community and the classroom is a community and we build them over the course of our time together. And I would say just as a little bit of a, a recommendation as the weeks unfold, uh, do take the time to try and build a community in this weird Zoom space, right? Uh, try to, to, to sort of decide and develop who you are in terms of how you contribute to a classroom culture because professors will notice it, but so will classmates and it can overall, it will improve the experience of everybody if people contribute and um, sort of commit to a community. And I think to help us with this, I think uh, Dr. Patty Durso has some um, uh, other ideas. So yes, uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, uh, Dr. Patty Durso, Professor of English and Director of College Writing at the Metro Campus. Patty. Okay, hi everybody. It's so good to see so many of you here and a special shout out to the brave souls with their cameras on because it's so nice to see your faces and see and see the people here. Um, you know, as Dr. Nisa just said, we really, we miss being with you all in the classroom and we miss talking to you all in person. So even just seeing you on the Zoom screen just helps a little bit make it personal. Um, so I want to very briefly talk to you about the importance of making connections with other students. I know that's been said quite a few times already and it's, it's important and that's why it's been said a lot, but I specifically want to focus on connecting with classmates in your classes. Um, normally, you know, if you're going into a classroom, you're sitting down, you're chatting with somebody next to you, you're walking out in the hallway together, maybe you go get some coffee or something, and it's natural for you to get to know your classmates in that way. In our current remote learning environment, however, that's not really possible, right? But those connections are really important, not just from a social perspective, but just from an educational perspective and a happiness perspective as well. So, you know, let's say you've all, you've all had at least one Zoom class, I'm assuming. So think back to one of your Zoom classes you've had. You know, maybe there was a classmate or two, you thought, hey, that person seems like somebody I'd really connect with, but you have no idea how to reach out to that person. So here's the simple way you can do it. Go to your Blackboard course for that site. You will find in course tools an email option. Your instructor might have also put that email option on the main menu. In that email option, you can email all of your classmates. You can email just one of your classmates, a few of your classmates. You know, it's all private. Your instructor's not gonna see your emails if you're just sending them to classmates. Um, I know you're not gonna stay on email because I know y'all don't communicate that way. But um, once you connect by email, you can exchange cell phone numbers, you can connect on social media, and, and you can get together that way. I, have, um, I also have a college-age daughter. She's going into a remote learning situation, and I know this is one of her big worries. You know, I'm going into a class, how do I meet people? You know, it's, it's just not the same. So that's a really important thing to do. Um, you know, and it's important for so many reasons. You could, you know, once you connect with classmates, you could form a study group with each other. You can ask classmates if you miss a class, if they could share their notes with you. Um, you can organize, you know, as Manish Wadwa said, an informal Zoom get together with your FDU Zooms. You can all set up a Zoom for actually up to, I think, 100 people for 45 minutes. So you can get together, you can talk, you can chat, you can have, you know, real coffee in a virtual environment. Um, you can even arrange to get together in person if you're both on campus um, or somewhere else. If you're near each other off campus, obviously socially distant, obviously with masks and all of that, preferably your FDU mask, right? Um, but you can get together and it, it's going to help you succeed in that class by connecting with each other more because you're going to be able to help each other talk through things. So, you know, my big message is don't be shy, reach out to each other. I guarantee that if you reach out to a classmate, that classmate will be really grateful that you reached out and hopefully you'll form a bond that will last and when you meet in person, it'll be really cool. That's it. Thanks, Patty. I, I think that's true, and I don't know if the students have got them yet, but if you haven't, you should all be receiving uh, two FDU uh, face masks and uh, uh, wear them with pride. Um, and I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Dr. April Patrick, who is Professor of English Literature, but also the University Director of Honours, to say a few words. April. Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to FDU or back to FDU um, to the returning students. 
Um, as Director of Honors, I just want to assure our 500 Honors students across the Florham and Metro campuses um, that any decisions about whether or not you're taking your courses in person or remotely will not affect your status in Honors. Honors courses will actually be remote this year, except for some of the Honors Univ 1001 sections, as well as some of the senior thesis work for students in the lab sciences. Um, but I do want to say, as you navigate the new semester and your remote learning, we encourage you to use honors as a starting point for any of the questions you may have, even if they're not related to honors. Um, often, it's something we can handle for you, but if it's not, we're really happy to help you find an answer, connect you with the right office. Um, as we keep talking about community, we also encourage you to use honors as a way to really build community. We'll be offering social activities remotely, virtually, um, for students to get to know each other, to potentially build those study groups, even if you're in different sections of the same class, um, that you might be able to find community among other honors students. Um, for those of you who are interested in joining our honors community, at the end of each semester, we invite all of the freshmen and sophomores with a 3.5 or higher cumulative GPA to join honors, and we would really love to to welcome you into uh, the honors programs at our campuses. Um, if regardless of whether you are a member now or are just thinking about becoming a member, you can always contact us at fduhonors at fdu.edu and we'll be happy to help you however we can. But again, welcome. Um, we're really glad to see all of you here today. Thank you, April. Um, so I hope the students get a feel now that uh, your faculty are really here to, to help you as well as staff. And uh, uh, Patty was mentioning forming study groups and uh, Craig Morton, as I mentioned, who's the Deputy Campus Executive, in addition to collecting your questions, uh, has something to say to you about that. So, Craig? Thank you very much, Mal. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody on the call. Um, you may receive by now an email about Circle N. I will put in the link in a second more about that, but I just want to take a moment to talk to you about Circle N. Um, Circle N is an easy-to-use study app that connects you with, with all your classmates. So it offers a lot of different study features. Um, you can make flashcards, generate quizzes, share notes, chat with your classmates. Um, you can get uh, on-demand help and just a lot of other great things uh, through Circle Lens. I'll post that link in a minute. Um, I also wanna mention that I am going, that we will be sending out a fact sheet of all of the different links that we have posted as well as a recording. So, if you're not being able to catch up with my, uh, what I'm posting in the chat and you think something copied down, don't worry, we will provide a recording and we will provide an FAQ sheet afterwards. I also want to encourage you to go into the Fairly modules and look at all the great information about the Tutoring Center and the Writing Center. Um, we are operating both our Tutoring Center and our Writing Center virtually um, this semester with um, live tutors that are there to help you and there's some great information on how to book appointments with both the tutoring and the staff of the writing center. We also have on both New Jersey campuses something called Smart Thinking, which is online tutoring. That's 24 seven uh, for virtually every subject offered by the university. And some great information on the Fall Fairly modules about um, Smart Thinking. All students um, have 300 minutes as part of their fall semester allotment. If you find you need more than 300 minutes of Smart Thinking tutoring, please reach out to the Academic Resource Center on your home campus. Uh, that's Darshan Shaw on the Forum campus and Margaret Rohde on the Metro campus. And they'll be more than glad to uh, work with you to get you some additional tutoring minutes. Thank you, Craig. And, and before we go to, uh, do we have questions, Craig, from our students? So question, uh, the first question we received. Uh, I just wanted to circle back, to circle in, if I can. Okay. Uh, uh, because, uh, you know, students may think this is just another study app, but this is actually almost like a game, right? Because students can collect points from using this. And I believe there are prizes associated with those points. If you get more points for interacting with more students and you have larger study groups. Um, so uh, there is a benefit to students in addition to the studying benefit uh, if you get involved in that. Okay. So the first question we received so far is, is there a deadline for the COVID training? So does uh, Steve or Brian want to respond to when they students should complete the training? Monday, last Monday. <laughs> I, works for me. Yeah, as soon as, as, soon as possible. They, they, it really needs to be done. It is a mandate that it be done. Um, so the expectation is everyone will have it done. I would imagine no later than the, the end of this month, but hopefully sooner than that. 
Yeah, I mean, it literally does not take very long to, to do it. And there is no, the students will be happy to know there is no quiz <laughs> at the end. Uh, but it's important information that everybody should know anyway. So uh, I think they should do it as soon as possible. Uh, another question we received was from a transfer student who was coming from a four-year university that at her previous university had trimesters and now she's at FDU on semesters. And she was wondering if any of the faculty or staff on the call had any tips on how to make that transition from a trimester basis to a, to a semester basis. Okay. Should we call somebody out here? Rich, you've got any ideas? Uh, well, I would only suggest uh, in terms of uh, addressing that issue to your professors is just to let them know. Um, uh, it would be helpful to know in terms of and something also I forgot to mention earlier is about your energy levels. You know, maybe you're used to the shorter, uh, shorter calendar in a trimester situation, so, uh, but maybe more frequently. Uh, so just to let them know, and that would be at least enough in my class. As far uh, how your credits would transfer over to FDU, I'm certainly not an authority figure on that, so I would leave it to somebody uh, with, a, um, with more uh, knowledge of enrollment and, and things like this. But as far as faculty are concerned, uh, just let us know and we'll work with you absolutely and unproblematically. And, and the, the credits, I believe, would just transfer in the way that uh, any credits transfer in as long as they're uh, you know, appropriate credits. So um, I would just say welcome. Uh, this is an unusual semester also at, uh, at FDU. It's, it's a somewhat condensed semester compared with our normal semesters uh, because I think you all know that um, we have uh, condensed the semester such that we're finishing the Tuesday of Thanksgiving week and, that, and then you'll be done. You'll be done with, um, with exams and, uh, and you can enjoy Thanksgiving without worrying that you have an exam to take uh, afterwards. And I'll also mention, actually, when we're, since we're talking about different calendars, uh, that, that this year, because of that, we're, we will also be offering a, uh, a winter session that will be much more robust than normal. Uh, so we'll be offering a, a six-week winter session. Uh, I think it's a six-week session, right? Yeah, a six-week winter session. And uh, we'll uh, obviously have the courses available in that session uh, way before um, actually hopefully uh, not too long after you, uh, those that are coming to campus start on campus and, and we'll be advertising those. And for students who obviously the, the, this is a uh, new students, most students don't usually take courses in the, in the winter session, but if you want to take some additional courses to get ahead of your program or to even graduate early, uh, there will be some opportunities to do that. So. Okay, Craig, any more questions coming in? Um, uh, we've had several international students on the call, so I was wondering if, if someone would like to speak more about the international student experience for the semester and things they should be aware of and any feedback guidance. Uh, interesting, okay, so I don't know whether those international students are here in New Jersey or if you are calling in, uh, joining us from your home country. Uh, I know most of our international students uh, went home last semester and many are taking uh, classes, I think, online this semester, uh, I, uh, which may cause, uh, you know, additional challenges for you in terms of time zones, et cetera. So uh, I would uh, certainly make it known in the classes that you're in that you're uh, joining from wherever it is you're joining, that you're on a different time frame, just so that the faculty member is aware. Um, you hopefully will have access to all of the, uh, you know, all of the, the FD website, of course, with all of the technology that we're talking about here, you should be able to have access to, but I would uh, just defer to Manish for a minute to make sure that it can all be accessed from overseas, Manish. Yes, um, uh, they can, and if, if students have a problem, then they can, they can log into the FDU VPN and I'll post the website um, uh, right now in the, in the chat box. Um, students should not have any issues, except from, there are certain countries that are embargoed, which is Cuba, Iran, uh, North Korea, and, and, and there are two other countries uh, that are embargoed, and we have no control over that at all. 
uh, there are certain VPNs available in, in the embargoed countries um, that can bypass um, um, the connection without the country being without the country's uh, monitor, but uh, that's totally out of our control. There's, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I've heard a few students having issues from China as well because the government controls the internet services, uh, but then also the VPN does help by passing um, those services. So uh, they should not be any issue. The regular VPN will help with that, right? The, yeah. Okay, so uh, I hope those are a few tips for our international students. Um, if you have any specific issues, uh, depending on who, you know, what they are, whether they're academic, uh, when you can certainly go to your faculty member, or if they're uh, te uh, technological, then certainly the, uh, the number that uh, Manish posted earlier is the number to, to call. But Manish, you're posting now, that's the VPN uh, access. So certainly you should have access to the VPN as well. Okay. Um, another student follow up with the international student question regarding what does it look like in terms of classes and activities so I believe they're asking would they be able to participate in virtual activities offered this semester uh, again if a student is overseas uh, then I believe that all of the uh, activities that will be rolled out virtually should be accessible to them uh, Brian uh, or Steve do you are you familiar with the new virtual environments that's going to be rolled out, uh, a bubble I believe it's called? Uh, so we'll be rolling out a new virtual environment uh, for student engagement. It'll allow student clubs, organizations to function, uh, for gatherings to take place. That'll get you out of the Zoom box, so to speak, uh, and get you interacting in a much uh, greater way. Uh, it's referred to as bubble, so stay tuned for new information coming out on that shortly. Okay, and that's for every student, not just international students, that's for all Everyone. students who, uh, who want to interact uh, remotely uh, and socialize remotely. We should be able to, um, they should be able to do so. For the students who are living on campus, you don't have to do everything remotely. We will be having some in-person activities as well, probably limited and probably outside, at least while the weather allows. But uh, I know people are trying to find ways for you to do some things in person on campus as well. Great. Um, a few questions are coming up about the library, so I'm wondering if uh, Anna would like to speak about the library services during this. Oh, ter terrific, yes. Anna Fontura is our university librarian. And uh, Anna, do you want to talk a little bit about operations during these times? Thank you. Yes, and welcome, everyone. We look forward to seeing you on campus um, starting on September 14th. Our libraries will be open with some limitations, reduced hours for sure. Uh, so Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. Um, but in person, uh, online, we are available to you um, for much longer than that. So librarians are available to you online. All our resources are available to you remotely. You should have no, act, no, no reason to, to worry about finding resources or research for your assignments. Um, go to our website. Um, and uh, chat, text, uh, email, call. Uh, you have access to librarians who are willing and ready to help you uh, with that. Um, as I said, a lot of our resources are electronic, so you have access to them um, as we speak. But if you need um, a place to study or um, you, you prefer in-person uh, contact with a librarian, you can visit the library starting uh, September 14th. So welcome. Thank you. Um, a student asked a question about how do they declare a minor? Okay, I'm going to pass that to the faculty to, uh, to, to respond because I think it depends on the program that they're in. So maybe you can talk about uh, your own program, uh, maybe Rich or, or um, April. Uh, I could just say, uh, I believe in, in my um, department uh, that you basically have to take 12 credits uh, in a field. Uh, so as a geographer, for instance, we don't have a geography major. If you were to want to minor in geography, I think it's 12 or is it 15 credits? Part of my ignorance here. Um, I, uh, I just sign things uh, when it comes to that. But uh, you just have to take a series of, of courses. You can speak to a faculty member in that discipline let them know that that's something you want to pursue. 
You can speak with your academic advisor. Uh, you can let them know that that's something you'd like to pursue. And as always, you can per uh, peruse the, the course books just to make sure that it is in fact something that you'd like to pursue. Um, so uh, those would be my suggestions. Uh, pardon me for not actually knowing the quantitative reality of the question. No, I mean, that's one of the reasons it's hard to answer because it really depends on what, uh, what your major is and what area you're in and, uh, and what's available on that specific campus. So I just get a few examples. Uh, April, do you have any examples? or? Yeah, I think it's similar to what Richard's saying, like, I think it's generally 12 to 15 credits. Um, usually it's a great idea to talk to a faculty member and or your academic advisor to feel like figure out if it's feasible. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this strategically where classes that would count toward general education requirements could also count toward a ma minor or a major. And so talking with an advisor and or a professor in that field would be really helpful. Um, once you've decided to do that though, the actual logistics of that go through enrollment services and through um, the registrar's office. I can see Aurora waving her hand. Um, and so she could take over maybe the logistics of, uh, you know, we're talking in the abstract about thinking about doing it. Um, but then the actual process of that gets handed off. And then that's where, as Richard was saying, we just sort of sign the papers and say, welcome to the major or welcome to the minor. So, so let's pass the mic to Aurora since she's on the call. Um, Aurora, do you mind saying a few words about this? Do we have to unmute? Hi. No, go ahead. Uh, okay, I think I just unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. Uh, well, I'm thrilled to be here and see all these fresh faces. I usually don't um, deal with too many students until they apply for graduation. Um, you can search on the website applying for a minor. Uh, you can also, there is an application you can fill out. It's a very short application, which is sent to your department. You can speak to um, the advisors in whatever department um, may, your minor you're interested in, and you would submit that application to um, our office. You can email registrar at fdu.edu. Um, you can also send any questions you may have about your academic program as far as the logistics uh, applications you may need to change minors, to change majors, et cetera. You can always reach out to that email. It's registrar at fdu.edu. Thanks, Aurora. You're welcome. How are we doing, Craig? I think those are pretty much all the questions we received so far. Okay, so uh, we'll just give you a few more minutes to send any, uh, any last questions in. And again, the offer is for anybody at the end of the meeting to stay and get a walk through a blackboard if you want to. I will just say, since we were talking to Aurora, uh, at the forum we had students earlier in the week, there was a little confusion about what was posted for your classes uh, versus uh, in terms of the platform they were being offered versus uh, how they're actually being offered because many classes before we uh, made the determination to go mostly remote were listed as hybrid or in-person. And it took some time, I think, to get those, uh, those uh, uh, annotated differently. So Aurora, can you just give us an update and let us know if they're all uh, Yes, yes. Um, all of the courses that will be remote have been already updated in our system. So if you check WebAdvisor, you will see which ones are um, remote and which ones will be on, on campus. The, um, we still are waiting uh, to do the rooming for the courses that are going to be on campus, but we still have a few, a few weeks to figure those logistics out. Um, you'll note that even though most of the courses are remote, they will have meeting days and times. Uh, that means, and as you should know by now, probably on the third day of the semester, that you will be meeting online in, on web campus, whether it's via Zoom or some other software, with your instructors and classmates on those designated days and times. But all of everything you see on WebAdvisor is up to date. Thanks, Aurora. And, and the reason that we don't have the rooms quite yet is because, because there's uh, fewer classes uh, in person, we're looking for the largest rooms so that we can do the appropriate social distancing. And uh, in some cases, that will mean that we'll be able to have all of the students together in the same room. For example, if you are a freshman and you are coming to campus or you'd like to come to campus to take your UNIV 1001 course, uh, we are making that available in person. 
and we're hoping that those will be in a room so that the entire class will be able to be together. Whereas some will be hybrid and you'll have half the class in for one session and the other half of the class in for the other session while the other half that's not in person will be doing something remotely. So Aurora, you wanted to say something else? Um, uh, yes, I just wanted to add that, um, so students can tell which courses will be remote and which in person, the remote, remote courses will be noted as web instructional method. If you do not see the web noted on WebAdvisor for a course, then that means it will meet in person. I know that students want to make those plans ahead of time. That's how you can tell. Right, unless any students suddenly panic that their um, uh, course they note is not annotated web, which means it is going to be meeting in person and you are not planning to come to campus, please let somebody know. We will do everything we can to accommodate you, whether that means either getting you into a different section or, or course, or uh, finding a way for you to be able to join that in-person class remotely. So we did spend a lot of the summer, in addition to all of the faculties <laughs> preparing their courses, uh, we spent a lot of the summer preparing technology for some of our uh, classrooms so that they have the appropriate Zoom equipment for students to be able to take their classes both in person and to have students uh, join by, uh, by Zoom remotely. So please don't panic. Just let your faculty member know if you're in a class that you thought was going to be fully remote for the entire semester and you find that it actually looks as though it might be in person for uh, after September 14th, just let your faculty member know and we'll take care of it. Okay, Craig, did any more questions come in? Uh, somebody asked a great question. Can students host their own Zoom meetings? And the answer is yes. So if you would log into fu.zoom.us, you can host your own meetings, um, up to 100 people with 45 minutes. So thank you for that question. Okay, good. If there are no more questions, I'm just going to put my, uh, let me see how many, fa how, many, how many daring students have actually put their videos on. I see a few there. For those that I can see, if you want to give us a thumbs up if you're feeling a little less anxious now than you were at the beginning of the session, uh, we'd love to see that. Uh, oh, great. I see at least one virtual thumbs up and I see some real ones. So thank you for doing that. And for any of you, uh, I would just say, um, you know, don't be alone. There are many people, I think we've, uh, We've, we've shown that through the session, but there's many people who are here to help you. So just don't feel lost. Uh, reach out if you're having uh, issues. We wish you the best semester, uh, of course. We want you all to stay healthy and safe. Please do that. Uh, but we hope academically you have a wonderful semester and we hope you get to meet uh, new colleagues and friends. And, uh, and we look forward to seeing those of you who are coming to campus wearing your mask and we'll be wearing our mask so you may not recognize us but we'll be there and uh if you do recognize us uh you know give us a wave don't shake our hands <laughs> and uh, uh we look forward to seeing you but for those of you who want to stay on the meeting now uh, manish and kathy will stay behind a little bit and we'll be happy to help you with uh, those technology issues okay so goodbye and good luck take care Okay, it looks like this is our group. Manish, do you want to take this or would you want me to take it this time or what do you want to do? Doesn't matter, Kathy. You can, you can take it. Okay, I'll take it then. And um, so, so uh, thanks everybody for staying for a few more minutes so we can show you a little bit about how to use Blackboard. Um, to do that, what I am going to do is uh, share my screen with you so you can watch what I'm doing. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the Blackboard login page. You may have seen this already since you've been in your classes for a couple of days now. The way you get to this page is by going to webcampus.fdu.edu 
and maybe Craig can share that with you in the in the chat webcampus.fdu.edu and you'll see you immediately get this kind of funny uh, it doesn't show that way on my screen um, and when you get here you just log in with your regular FDU um, login ID and password the same one that you use for your email okay so you just and this is how you log into almost all of our campus services as Manish already explained to you um, we'd like you to have just one way of getting into all of our campus services. Now I'm already logged in, so I'm going to show you the way things look once you've logged into your class. Now because I'm not a student, my screen looks a little bit different from yours, um, but yours would look similar. The most important thing that you see when you first log into Blackboard is an area called My Courses. And what you'll see here is a list of courses where you're the student. Now, I only have one. I have a sample course there, but I have a lot of courses where I'm listed as an instructor. But again, I don't really teach here anymore. I'm just, um, I, I uh, work in an office, um, but I have a lot of um, kind of fake courses. And that's one, one, one of the ones I'm going to show you is one of these fake courses. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example online course. Okay. And when you get into your Blackboard courses, they're going to look something like this. Now, this particular course we set up as an example for your instructors who were taking um, uh, workshops with my office this summer to help them learn how to teach online more effectively than they knew how to before. So we set this up for them as a way for them to make it easier for them to set up their courses. So some of them may have used this and that you may, this may look familiar to you. I'm going to change my view to it's called student preview so we can look. So what you see is pretty much exactly what the students see in a course like this. Usually what you see when you first come into your Blackboard course are announcements. These are very important. This is how your instructor communicates with you expectations for the course and things that are coming up. Now in this example, we only have a couple of announcements and one of them is a welcome announcement. And I hope your professors put that in your class um, and that's, that's good practice. We really hope that they do that. So it welcomes you to the class and tells you how to get started in your class. For most of you, that'll include um, telling you about your next Zoom meeting for the class. Okay, so announcements. Keep track of your announcements. Your professors are going to be communicating with you there. And then on the left side, you see this menu area. In this course, it's in red. It may show up as blue in a lot of your other courses. And each, depending on the course, you may see different words here. Okay, but in general, they're going to look kind of similar. One of the important areas for you to note is an area called faculty information. Okay, I'm going to click on that now. And your professors should put in there information about themselves. They'll tell you how to contact them. They'll tell you when their office hours are. Now, if you're a freshman, you may not know what office hours are. Um, I think that's something that you probably cover in your UNIV class. Um, but office hours are a way for you to meet your professors more or less one on one to have a conversation. If there's something that's worrying you about the class, you're not understanding things you want to learn more about, some professors just to hang out with if that's what you want to do. So look at the faculty information and see how the professors um, uh, are available. The next area that you'll see in many of your classes is called course information. This is also something you're going to find very useful. This is a part of the class where um, we've asked instructors, and all the instructors may use this a little differently, but we've asked them to put in basic information about the class. So you may have a course overview, a description of what you're going to be doing. You may have a statement of learning outcomes for the class, the things that the professor hopes you're going to be able to do by the end of your class. Um, and um, there should be a syllabus in this, and uh, I don't know why it isn't here. Usually this is where you're going to find your course syllabus as well as in this area. Okay, this one, it must be hidden, which is a mistake. So it should be there. Um, your course syllabus, uh, again, for those of you who are new to college, is um, that's going to be your plan for the course. Everything that you need to do for the course is included in that syllabus. So again, look for that. Look for everything that the instructor has on it. And then the most important part of your course. So th these things are all kind of like basic information. Course documents is usually the place where instructors put your learning materials. So if they have, um, if you're doing a remote class where you're working on Zoom, you may have handouts. You may have things you need to read. 
your instructor may tell you, I have an assignment for you to do. Usually those will show up in this area. In this particular example, we have it broken down into modules, which are usually like a week of class or two weeks of class. And you would click on the modules and you'd find out what does the instructor want you to do in here. So here we have instructions, we have objectives, we have learning materials. So again, we just have this as a blank. This is something for the professors to fill out, but this is where you might find your reading notes, your lecture materials, and so forth. So course documents, get to know that, get to know how your professor has organized your specific class. Okay, usually looks a little bit like this. Um, somebody during this session said you could use email here. Again, that, that's where this is. This is how you can send email to all users in your class, all the student users, or select users. So if you want to just send an email to, these are the people, these are people on my staff, but if I wanted to send an email to this guy, Jim, I would just say, hey Jim, and I could type my email here and I could send it to him. Okay, and that way if you don't know somebody, you can reach out. Okay, so let's go back. So that's email. Uh, discussion. Some of your professors are going to assign discussion topics. This isn't exactly like Facebook. In fact, it's pretty primitive compared to like how you're uh, communicating with people on Facebook. But that's here. This is a place for you to um, have discussions about course material. Uh, your professor should be, it's going to be different in every class, and if you have this, your professor will explain to you what the expectations are in that class. Some of them grade for it, some of them don't, some of them is just like a social area, but um, your professor will let you know. Um, again, um, there's other things in here. Some of your professors have set up groups, so they may break you up into small groups to do work, and you would find that here. Resources for students may not show up in all your classes, but that's it's in this class. So we'll show you what it is. So um, uh, we just put in this example course a lot of places for you to find things that are helpful to you, like advising and the libraries and so forth and so on. And um, Zoom meetings is another important link. If your instructors are using it and we've encouraged them to, there would be a link to all of the Zoom meetings for your class in your Blackboard. Now, we can't force the instructors to do that, so they might have done it a different way, but uh, it's our hope that that's where you're going to find your Zoom meetings. Ask your instructors to do it that way if they're not already doing it, because it really does help you. Um, and then I wanted to show you this area as well. Um, tools are where you can find all kinds of things about your class, your calendar. Um, I don't think we have the Grade Center enabled on this particular course, but that's where you would find your grades as well. Um, so again, this is a sample course. So we don't have um, everything set up for students because we don't actually, have, oh, here it is. Here's my grades. We do have it set up, sorry. It wasn't where I expected it to be. So this is where you would go to find your grades in their class. Again, assuming your instructor is using the Grade Center for posting grades, and we've asked them to do that during remote learning, but you know some of them are gonna be less likely to do that than others. If you really need to know your grade, then reach out to your instructor if you're not entirely sure where it's going to be. Um, I think one of the things you need to bear in mind is that we have all these tools in Blackboard, but the instructors are going to use this differently. Um, that's pretty much all you need to know. Everything is on this left sidebar, so just go looking for it if you can't find it. If, you get, if you're still lost and you don't know what you're doing, then um, the best place to go for help is the University Technical Assistance Center, and Manish... Uh, posted a link for you um, earlier on to show you exactly uh, how to get there. But again, that's 973-443-8822. And maybe Craig could post that in the, um, the chat link again. Uh, that's your best place to go if you really need help. Um, those people, as Manish said, they've been trained to um, know the basics. And if there's a question they can't answer, they'll know how to refer you. So always use that, not just for Blackboard, but for really anything that you're having trouble with in terms of technology at the university. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, do people have questions or things you'd like to ask? We could probably unmute them, Craig, if because uh, it's such a small group. Dr. Kelly, can you go through the steps of actually doing a discussion post, creating a thread, and responding to a thread? I surely can, yes. I didn't want to do that because I wasn't sure people wanted it, but... Um, Yes, um, so here's a discussion forum that an instructor has set up. So with instructions here on how to do that. Um, 
hang on just a second. I need to get rid of the faces here so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so what I have done is I have clicked on this forum post and it says there's currently one thread in this forum and I can join this conversation by creating a thread. So that's what I'm going to do. This one is to, uh, you, uh, this one says use this forum to provide a brief introduction to the class. Uh, since much of our work in this class revolves around live class discussions and peer learning, please describe your work experience and academic background. This is intended for um, a class where we have mostly adult learners who are uh, working. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a thread. And I could post in here because this is an introduction. Hi, everybody. And I might type in here, for example, hi, my name is Kathy and I am associate provost at FDU. I'm really excited to start this class. And of course, depending on what your instructor had asked you to post, um, you might want to post something a little bit more um, in depth than that. Um, so, um, you know, they might ask you to, for example, do some research and um, post something about what you found out to the class that you can get feedback on it. Okay. So that's, um, uh, that's where you can type an actual discussion post. If you wanted to bold something, make it bigger. There's rich text here. So I'm going to choose that. I am going to um, bold this. I, okay. There you go. So I could put in all kinds of formatting and so forth in here. If I wanted to attach a file, uh, this one asked to introduce yourself. So maybe I wanted to, and it said to talk about your work experience. So maybe I'd want to put a resume here. So I could browse my computer and look for something to uh, post here. Okay, so you could do that too, depending on what your professor asked. And then when you're done, you can save a draft if you're not completely ready to, you say, yeah, I'm thinking about this. I don't know if I really want to post this yet. I want to get some more information before I post it. So you could do that. Or if you're ready, you could just click submit. Okay, does that make sense? Do, do people um, see how that works? Okay. Um, anything else you'd like to see? Uh, somebody asked a question, why do some professors not have the resource for students tab? I believe that's an optional tab for professors. It is optional. It's something that we set up for them that they have to install in their class and not all of them have done that. Mm -hmm. um, again, bear in mind, it was the professors who went to workshops this summer that my office uh, prepared and not everybody was able to go. So um, that's why they might not have it. We've made it available to people, but again, they, they, you know, they may not even know how to put it in there. We're, we're getting it out there and we're hoping that more and more people get it in. So um, uh, hopefully you'll see that in at least a couple of your classes. So if it's in one class, it's the same information that'd be in other classes. It would exactly the same in every class, right? You're, the one difference is that depending on where the class is, I mean, we're all remote now, but if your course is technically um, Metro, for example, they might uh, uh, blank out the Florham and Vancouver information. So they, you know, it might be not exactly the same because they'll take those away, but it's more or less the same. Okay. Well, I don't see any other questions. So thank you all for staying with us. We will be posting this recording both on the FD website, the Fall at Fairly website, as well as emailing all the students that registered for this session. So please feel free to reach out, feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions. And thank you so much for joining us. All right, thanks everybody. Take care.